Dreaming of a killer YouTube intro that'll skyrocket your channel? You're in the right place. Here's the thing, countless creators have shot to fame from a single video that went viral. But imagine this, your next video has all the makings of a hit, yet it flops because the first 20 seconds didn't hook the viewers. So what sets a winning intro apart from the rest? What's the secret sauce these top creators are using? It boils down to a straightforward four-step formula. Intrigued? Dive into this video and we'll break it down step by step. So you've got this killer YouTube video idea, right? You've scripted it, filmed it, edited it to perfection. It's funny, it's beautiful, it's everything you wanted. But here's the kicker. Imagine crafting a stellar video but skimping on its title and thumbnail. It's like baking a delicious cake and forgetting the icing. Your title and thumbnail aren't just afterthoughts, they're your video's front door. Crafting that perfect TNT might take time, maybe days or even weeks, but it's an investment in your content success. As Mr. Beast wisely points out, it's simple, no clicks, no views. So give your video the introduction it deserves and the clicks will follow. So you've nailed your title and thumbnail and you're feeling pretty good, right? Well, hold on to that confidence because now comes the real challenge, the first five seconds of your video. Believe it or not, this tiny window is where most viewers decide to stay on or bounce. Nail those initial moments and you've got them hooked for a long haul. How do the YouTube big shots do it? They've got two-pronged approach here. First, they kick off with a sentence that echoes their title, setting the stage. Then they follow it up with a visual, a shot that's a spitting image of their thumbnail. It's like a one-two punch, ensuring viewers that they're in the right place and promising value right from the get-go. Strawberry basket! No! Strawberry basket! No! All right, let's break this down with a real world example. Ever watched a video by Mark Rober? Let's dissect this one. Picture this, the thumbnail shows an egg suspended above the earth, held by a sleek black rod. The color palette, a striking mix of blue, white, and black. The title screams, egg dropped from space. Intriguing, right? Now hit play. Within the first five seconds, Mark says, this is space and this is an egg moments before I attempted the world's highest egg drop. Did you notice anything? The visuals are a mirror reflection of the thumbnail. That same egg, the same black rod and those signature colors, and his opening line, it's like an echo of the title. Mark's not just throwing content, he's crafting an experience, ensuring every piece aligns perfectly. Mark Roberts got this down, but he's not alone in the game. Big names like Mr. Beast, Mr. Who's the Boss, and Michelle Carre are in on this strategy. Here's the deal. Your video's opening doesn't need to be a carbon copy of your title and thumbnail. It doesn't have to match pixel for pixel or word for word, but it's gotta be in the same ballpark because viewers clicked for a reason. You've got to reassure them straight away that they're not falling for clickbait and they're getting what they signed up for. So you've nailed those crucial first five seconds, but what's next? Time to dive into the meat of your intro. And here's where things get spicy. You see, there's no one size fits all for intro lengths. Take Mr. Beast, quick and snappy, capping at 25 seconds. Mark Robert, he lecturates a bit more, stretching up to 45 seconds. And Mr. Who's the Boss, he's all about that swift under 10 second intro. But here's the kicker. While their styles differ, the top dogs on YouTube all have one common thread. They've got a formula, a structure they swear by for every intro they craft. So after those initial five seconds, where they've really matched the vibe of their title and thumbnail, what's next? These YouTube pros dive deeper. They craft curiosity gaps, making you think, I've got to know more. They set the scene, giving you the context you need, and here's the clever bit. They play into input bias, making you value what you're about to watch even more. It's not just about grabbing attention, it's about keeping it. All right, let's break this down with Mark Robber's egg drop intro as our guide. After syncing up with this title and thumbnail, Mark throws in a curveball, a curiosity gap. This is space, and this is an egg, moments before I attempted the world's highest egg drop. Now that's a teaser. Did he nail the record or did it go all south? Our brains, they're funny things, right? They hate loose ends. When faced with a question like, did he break the record? Our minds are like, I've got to know. And just like that, Mark's got us hooked. We're not going anywhere until we get that answer. Curiosity gaps aren't always about grand mysteries. It could be teasing a three-step formula, making viewers think, what are those next steps? Or maybe blurring something out sparking on what's hidden there. Really, the key here is to keep them guessing. It's all about the tease. All right, picture this. Just five seconds into the video, and Mark's already set the stage with his title and thumbnail, and thrown in a juicy curiosity gap. He's on fire, but wait, there's more. He dives into the backstory saying, ever heard of an egg drop competition? competition? In case you never had the chance to do it yourself in school, the goal is to build a contraption that can protect a raw egg from breaking when dropped from the tallest height possible. So my original plan was to drop an egg in a contraption I built from the world's tallest building. But humans are always building taller buildings. So if I really wanted to future-proof this record, I realized I would need to go all the way to the top and straight to outer space. Mark's not just telling a story, he's taking us on a journey. So here's where we're at. We've synced up with the title and 
Kong thumbnail, sparked curiosity, and laid out the whole egg drop from space concept. Sounds like a solid YouTube intro, right? The best intros don't just match the hype, they amplify it. Damn, that just made me snuff, yo. And here's the secret sauce. It's all about leveraging input bias. It's this nifty idea that the more sweat, time, and cash we pour into something, the more we cherish it. So it's not just about meeting expectations, it's about blowing them out of the water. Like if you ever bought a bottle of wine for $50, you'll naturally cherish it more than the same bottle priced at $20. That's the magic of input bias at work. It's all about perceived value. Now let's pivot to Mark Robber. He's a master at weaving through this concept in his content. He starts off by saying, embarking on this three years, years ago, ago, I knew if I could draw my experience of landing stuff on other planets, I would be guaranteed the record. But what I didn't know is this would be the most physically, financially, and mentally draining video I would ever attempt. He's not just narrating an event here, he's sharing a journey. By emphasizing the time, effort, and challenges, Mark paints a vivid picture of dedication. It's not just about an egg dropping from his face, it's about the heart and soul poured into making it happen. And as viewers, we're not just intrigued, we're invested. We're now part of Mark's journey, eager to see where it leads. You don't need a space mission to make an impact either. It's all about showcasing your hustle. Maybe your editing is top notch or perhaps you're, you know, really deep dive into research, spending a whole week on it, or you took on a challenge few would dare. The key, highlight that effort right from the get-go. When viewers see the passion and hard work that you poured into it, they'll appreciate your content even more. And guess what? They'll stick around. No flashy stunts needed, just genuine effort. So next time you hit upload, make sure your dedication shines through early on. It's a game changer. Now picture this. You've nailed the title and thumbnail expectations, sprinkled in some curiosity gaps, set the scene, and played the input bias card. You've got all the elements for a dynamite YouTube intro, but here's the real magic. It's not just about having the right ingredients, it's about the mix. How you blend these elements determines if your intro is just decent or downright epic. So as you craft, remember, it's all about the mix. Here's the deal when crafting that perfect intro. Show, don't tell. Think about it. When YouTube's autoplay is in play, many might catch your intro without any sound. Imagine that. So your visuals, they've got to be on point. It's about grabbing attention, making someone pause and think, I need to see more of this. Even if they haven't heard a single word, your intro should be compelling that it speaks volumes, sound or no sound. That's the key to really reeling in viewers and keeping them hooked. And here's the thing, the best YouTubers like Mark Robber and Mr. Beast, they know the power of visuals. When Mark dives into an egg drop concept, he's not just chatting at a desk. No, he's giving you a front row seat with vivid examples. And Mr. Beast, he breaks down his Olympic events. He's not just listing them off, he's rolling clips giving you a taste of the action to come. The lesson, killer intros are more than words. They pull you into a scene, making you feel like you're right there. It's not just about telling the story, it's about living it. All right, here's a pro tip for crafting that killer intro. As you draft your script, jot down potential visuals for each point. Think of it as like a painting, a picture with your words. These notes, they're your roadmap, your shot list. They guide you through capturing the perfect footage or designing the right graphics. Remember, it's all about that first impression. By pairing your words with compelling visuals, you're setting the stage to captivate your audience right from the get-go. All right, let's talk editing. Once you've got all those shots and visuals ready for your intro, remember, pacing is king. Here's why. On YouTube, once someone hits that full screen mode, they're pretty much committed. But those crucial 20 seconds before, it's a battlefield of distractions notifications, other videos, you name it. So your intro's pacing needs to be on point, keeping viewers engaged and steering them clear of those pesky distractions. Nail that rhythm and you've got them hooked. To keep viewers glued to the screen, they kick things off with a bang. They supercharge their intros by ramping up the pace, rapid fire clips, visuals, and camera angles. Take Mr. Beast for example. He swishes visuals every 1.4 seconds. Mark Robber, he's right up there shifting every 1.6 seconds. It's like a roller coaster ride pulling you in from the very start. Here's the deal. To gauge your intro hits the right pace, put it through the ringer and watch it over and over in different settings. Try it with no sound and noisy spot, or let your trusty seven-year-old cousin give a whirl. If either of you glances away getting distracted or reaches for the phone, that's a red flag. Chances are others will do the same. So revisit those sections, tweak or trim them as needed. It's all about keeping that attention locked in. And I get it. Crafting a killer YouTube intro can seem like a lot of work for just 20 seconds. But here's the golden nugget of wisdom. Start with that killer title and thumbnail. In those first five seconds, sync up with what you promised. Then deep dive into curiosity gaps, context, and input bias. And remember, front load the excitement while showing, not just telling. These steps, 
They're your path to making waves on YouTube. It's all about setting the stage for success. Need a handy reference? You can grab this visual as a guide for all your intros. And remember, don't rush it. Take your time, nail these steps, and watch your results soar. Embrace the journey and you'll see the payoff. Truth be told, the YouTube journey can be tough. You'll pour your all into some videos they might not ever take off. Then there are those surprise hits that defy logic. It can drive you nuts. But here's the thing, if you've got the guts to stick with it, you're already a success. Don't wait for a fancy subscriber count to validate that. It'll come in due time. Now, if you're digging this content and craving more YouTube insights, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give that thumbs up a good smash. Also, be sure to join my free school community called Elevate, where you can chat with me live, watch my premium course content, and meet other successful entrepreneurs who are crushing YouTube and affiliate marketing right now. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.